Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to express finitely generated modules in terms of generators and relations. To start with, let's take R to be any commutative ring. And let's take M to be any finitely generated R module. What does that mean? That means that the exist elements V1 up to Vm in M such that if you take any element V in M, you can find scalars or other elements of the ring A1, Am in R such that V is of the form A1 V1 plus Am Vm. V is equal to this. This is just the definition of being finitely generated. Now if you define a homomorphism phi from R M to M by saying that phi of Ei is equal to Vi. What is EI? EI is just the ith coordinate vector in RM. So it's the vector uh, with all zeros except in the ith place you have 1. Then phi of EI is VI. And so if you take phi of A1, A2, AM, it's going to be A1, V1 plus AM, VM just because phi is an R module homomorphism. And so what we conclude is that phi is surjective. Okay. Now, <coughs> let n be the kernel of phi. By the first isomorphism theorem, we have M is isomorphic to Rm mod N. So what we are seeing here is that every finitely generated R module is isomorphic to a quotient of a free module of the form R to the M. Now let's try to find understand better this submodule N. Now suppose R is no Ethereum. Then we've seen that every submodule of a finitely generated uh, R module is going to be finitely generated. And um, so that means that N is finitely generated. So that means that there exist vectors x1, x2, up to xn in R to the M which generate M. Right? So the N vectors which generate N for some integer N. Now let's bring in some matrix notation to write things rather nicely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to denote elements of R to the M as column vectors. So if I have X in R to the M, I will write X as x1, x2, dot, 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 xm, where these elements are in R. So I'm going to think of elements of R to the M as column vectors. And so now suppose we have that xi is the column vector xi1, 
x i 2 x i no let me write it like this x 1 i x 2 i dot 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 x m i ok then let us form the matrix x whose entry in the ith row and jth column is x i j so it is x 1 1 x 1 2 and uh, how many of these vectors x are there? the n of them so I will get x uh, x 1 n x 2 1 x 2 2 x 2 n x m 1 x m 2 x m n so this is an m by n matrix with m rows and n columns and what we are seeing is that n is of the form x u where u belongs to r n which is nothing but the column space of the matrix x ok so um, so this is an m by n matrix you can multiply it by vectors of the form uh, u1 u2 un n uh, column vectors of size n and you'll get a column vector of size m and the column space of a matrix is precisely all linear combinations of its columns and so when we say that x1 x2 xn is generated uh, generates n that means that the elements of n are all in the column space of x in fact the column space of x is equal to n so what we have is that when we look at a finitely generated r module when r is no ethereum then you can write it as m is of the form r to the m mod column space of x for some matrix x and what is this matrix it's of the form it's an m by n matrix with entries in r now once we have such a matrix we can work easily with matrices which lend themselves to easy computations as we shall see well easy or maybe complicated but at least you have a grip on computation let us look at some very simple examples of generators and relations for finitely generated modules let's start with the really simple example take r to be um, the ring z of all integers and take m to be z mod 6 z so the most straightforward way to do this is to note that m is generated by the residue class of 1 and so we would define phi from z to the power 1 it has only one generator to m by taking 1 goes to that generator 1 this one is the residue class mod 6 and so we get m is isomorphic to z modulo the column space of the matrix which has just one entry the one by one entry matrix with single entry 6 but well the other ways to do this too m is also generated by 2 and 3 in z mod 6 z and um, so we would then define phi from z squared to m by taking a comma b goes to um, 2a plus 3b in z mod 6 z what is the kernel of phi okay so we would like uh, those pairs a, um, a comma b such that 2a plus 3b is a multiple of 6 in particular if a is a multiple of 3 then 2a will be a multiple of 6 and if b is a multiple of 2 then 3b will be a multiple of 6 in fact uh, it's not very difficult to show that the kernel of phi is just consists of vectors of the form 3x 
to y where x y belongs to z and so what we get is m is isomorphic to z square modulo the column space of the matrix um, generated by 3 0 0 2 let's take uh, the next example uh, where we take r to be the ring of polynomials in some field f and let's take m to be as a as a additive abelian group f squared and uh, let's define the action of t as uh, the matrix a equals 0 1 0 0 okay so if you take any polynomial in t it will act by substituting for t the matrix a computing the resulting polynomial uh, matrix and then applying it to a column vector in f squared so m is generated by 1 0 and 0 1 after all 1 0 and 0 1 form an f basis uh, for m and therefore they should also generate m as an ft module and so we define phi uh, so this phi is going to be from ft squared to f squared right so it will take a column vector consisting of two polynomials pt and qt and it will go to well because it's a uh, because it's an um, ft module i can write this as phi of uh, pt times the vector 1 0 plus qt times the vector 0 1 and as per our prescription uh, for uh, writing finitely generated r modules as quotients of um, uh, r to the n we must take this 1 0 to the first generator and 0 1 to the second generator so these are vectors in ft squared and we'll take it to pt Uh, so this is pt times 0 1 so here we'll put pa times 1 0 plus qa times 0 1 okay now let's say this polynomial p is of the form um, p0 plus p1 t plus p2 t squared plus dot 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 now note that uh, p a t a squared is actually the matrix 0 0 0 0 so when we evaluate p of a there will be only two terms p0 plus p1 times a so this will give us p0 times 1 0 plus p1 times a applied to 1 0 but a applied to 1 0 is uh, 0 right you do this matrix multiplication you get 0 0 so this there's no term here and similarly when you do it from q suppose q is q0 plus q1 t plus dot 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 the higher degree terms vanish and so now we'll get q0 times 0 1 plus q1 times a times 0 1 but a times 0 1 is just 1 0 so it will get plus q1 times 1 0 which you can write as um, p0 plus q1 q0 so this is what phi does to an in general element of uh, ft squared and uh, from this 
you can easily uh, see what it means for a polynomial to be in the kernel of phi. If pt, comma qt is in the kernel of phi, then firstly q0 has to be 0. So that means that the polynomial q has to have constant term 0, which means that it is t times some other polynomial. So let's just start with that kernel of phi. So firstly what we have is that the q polynomial is t times some other polynomial t times let's say beta t and then what we have is that the constant term of p0 is the first term of q1 which is uh, of q the constant term of p is the first term of q but the first term of q is the constant term of uh, of uh, is the negative of the constant term of b so i can write p as minus beta t plus t times any other polynomial alpha t. As long as I have this, these constraints, these things will be, be 0, where alpha t and beta t are in ft. And this is just uh, equal to t minus 1 0 t times alpha t beta t and so what we have is that the kernel of phi is the column space of the matrix t minus 1 0 t and so what we have is that m is isomorphic to f t squared modulo the column space of t minus 1 0 t now one thing you notice is that this t minus 1 0 t can be written as t times the identity matrix minus the original matrix a 0 1 0 0 and this is going to be a phenomenon uh, which will hold in general more generally uh, let's fix a finite dimensional vector space v over a field f and a linear operator t so v is a finite dimensional vector space over f and t is a linear map from v to v and to this data you can associate um, an ft module m let's call it m subscript t to denote that it's associated to t you've seen this construction already as an additive abelian group m t is just p and uh, the action of p t on a vector v is obtained by taking this polynomial p and evaluating it at the linear operator t and then applying the resulting linear operator to v so if pt is the polynomial p0 plus p1t plus dot 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 plus pdt raised to d then p of capital t is the operator p0 times the identity of v plus p1t plus pd t to the d this is again a linear operator and you can apply it to the vector now if you pick a basis of v let's call it e1 up to en then with respect to that you can write down a matrix for t say t has matrix a with respect to this basis what does that mean that means that the jth column of uh, a is the action of t on the jth basis vector the ijth entry multiplied by ei so this is just the definition of what it means for t to have matrix a now uh, we can think of e1 e2 en as generators of m of the ft module n 
um, of course there may be a lot of redundancy but they actually generate uh, mt as an f vector space they form a basis of mt as an f vector space therefore they certainly generate uh, mt as an ft module okay so like accordingly we should define to express it as a uh, free uh, module ft to the n mod something we must define phi from ft to the n so n generator so ft to the n to um, mt by taking the ith generator here so let's say e i tilde in ft to the n is the ith coordinate vector So it's the constant polynomial one in the ith place and zeros everywhere else. So v of will take e i tilde to the ith generator of m, which is just e i. So the question is, what is the kernel of v? So the theorem that I'll prove now is that the kernel of v is the column space of the matrix T times identity minus a we've already seen this uh, in the case of a simple 2 by 2 example and now let's give the proof in general so what's the jth column of ti minus a so if you think about it you have uh, t times i so its jth column is 0 0 0 and then there's a t in the jth place and then again it's zeros so there's zeros everywhere except a t in the jth place and then you have to take minus a so that's just the jth column of a a1j a2j anj so you can write this as uh, t times this is e tilde j the jth coordinate vector of ft to the n minus and this you can write as a linear combination of the coordinate vectors of ft to the n a i j e tilde i i goes from 1 to n and i want to show that uh, the column space of ti minus a is equal to the kernel of phi so first i'll show that the column space of ti minus a is contained in the kernel of phi and this is just uh, for this it's just enough to show that each column of ti minus a is contained in the kernel of phi so let's apply phi to this column we get t e j tilde minus summation a i j e i tilde and now let's use ft the fact that phi is an ft module homomorphism so you will get the action of t on a uh, phi of e j tilde so phi was defined by taking ej tilde to ej so this becomes t acting on ej minus summation over i a i j and e i tilde goes to e i but how does t act on ej well t acts by the matrix a so this is a ej you think of ej as a column vector with a one in the jth place minus summation a i j e i but you'll recognize this summation here as nothing but a e j itself so this is zero hence we have shown that column vector or uh, a column space of t i minus a is contained in the kernel of phi okay now for the converse we have some vector which is in the kernel of phi and we want to show express it as a linear combination of the columns of ti minus a so let's say if we have a vector uh, uh, in ft to the n then uh, firstly note that you can write it as a sum of uh, certain very simple vectors so let's say note that ft to the n has uh, an f basis as an f vector space it has an it's an infinite dimensional ft itself is an infinite dimensional vector space over f and ft to the n is therefore also an infinite uh, dimensional vector space but it has basis t to the k times ei tilde where k runs over all non-negative integers and i goes from 
वन टू एन राइट सो दिस इज अ बेसिस ऑफ ऑफ एफ टी टू द एन एंड लेट्स जस्ट लुक एट अ बेसिस एलिमेंट हियर सो इफ यू लुक एट टी टू द के ई जे I can write it as t to the k minus one times t e j. But this uh, can be written as t to the k minus one times. Um, well, this should be e j tilde t e j tilde minus summation i goes from one to n. Um, A i j e j tilde plus t to the k minus one summation i goes from one to n a i j e j tilde. I haven't really done anything. I've subtracted and added t to the k minus one a i j e j tilde. But this thing here. Belongs to the column space of T i minus a. It's just the jth column of T i minus a. So this is m plus t to the k minus one, or maybe I'll write this like this: summation a i j t to the k minus one e tilde j. And m is an element of the column space of T i minus a. So what I've shown is that if I start with the vector t to the k times e tilde j, by subtracting some vector m from the column space of T i minus a, I can reduce the degree of this term, uh, this t to the k to t to the k minus one. Of course, I'll get now. Uh, sorry, this should be i or j. and now i can keep working with these terms and further keep reducing their degrees and at the end of the day what i'll get is that um, t to the k e tilde j is equal to m plus some vector um, some a uh, vector of the form um, summation a i j e tilde i where these are just uh, Not a i j, some some scalar c i j, where c i j belong to f. Step by step, reducing the degree, and m is in the column space of T i minus e. So this can be done for every basis vector, and therefore it can also be done for every vector in F t to the n. So every vector v belongs to F t to the m. is of the form v equals m plus some vector w where w is in f to the n which is we think of as an f subspace of f t to the n n here okay and now suppose uh, v is in the kernel of So suppose v belongs to kernel of phi. So now we have v is equal to um, m plus w, where m belongs to column space of T i minus a. So then phi of v is phi of m plus w, phi of w, uh, where um, But m is in the column space of T i minus a, and we know that that's in the kernel of phi. So this is zero. So phi of v is phi of w, where w is now just a vector in F t to the n, whose coordinates are all constant. They are just elements of f. But so phi of w, if w is um, if w is um, you know of the form uh, summation c i. W i i goes from one to n. Then phi of w is just 
mm, no sorry if i write it c i e tilde i then e tilde i goes to e i so this is just summation c i e i which implies that so if phi is in the kernel of uh, v is in the kernel of phi then phi v is zero so then this implies that ci equals 0 for all i which means that w itself is 0 therefore v is equal to m plus is equal to m plus 0 and m is in the column space of ti minus a which means that v itself lies in the column space of ti minus a